So I fished this lake two days ago and absolutely got spanked. Saw fish all day, marked fish all day, had a couple nibbles, caught one little dinker nine inch kokanee. And that was it. There was some guy out here who was catching fish and he was basically running over everybody's lines and uh, had zero bolt control. And because he had no boat control, he was like, just going like this. Like, and of course that's when he was getting bit. I tried replicating that and did not. So, did not work for me. So I call that the anti-karma bite. Sometimes the jerks catch all the fish, which is no fun. And there's the fish at 25 feet. And there's a the fish on. <laughs> oh man. Just in the first few seconds of the day. That's a good sign. Literally just got that thing down there. That's crazy. Feels heavy. Oh, he's off. He spit it and jumped. Felt the weight come off of it. And then he jumped back there. Well, that's a promising start. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of heartbreak, but to have a fish on in 30 seconds is, is pretty good. Hopefully it bodes well for what's to come. That was snapping in a three ounce weight and then dropping it 40 feet down, 40 feet back. Pink hoochie, silver moon jelly dadger. Oh, there's fish. Whoa! That thing is ripping my butt. That, that was a huge hit. I can't even get this other rod out. Gosh, you see that thing bury? This, this feels like a big fish. It's swimming at me though. I hate when they do that. Just gotta reel, keep up with them. Okay, there's the weight. I gotta bring that thing into me. Speed up. There we go. This thing is bulldogging me like crazy. Good grief. Look at those head shakes. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. Still taking mine. Oh, it's that time of the morning where I can't see under the water. The reflection makes the water look inky black. Makes it really hard to stab because those the backs of the fish just disappear. Come on, come up. He is just staying down. Oh my god, yes. That's a nice fish. That is a nice fish to start the day. I will take that in a heartbeat. Dang. Not as big as the ones I got on DECA the other day, but still a tank. He fought. Almost as good though. Look at that fish. That is a beauty. Beauty. Well, that's one way to start the morning. <laughs> Two fish on like a minute. I still have not deployed my other rod yet. All for good reason. <laughs> Well, something's really changed because when I got up here the other day, I was marking these fish and they wouldn't bite a thing. Uh, high pressure's just kind of settling back in, so it's sunny and calm rather than stormy and windy. And I know that can throw off the kokanee bite at home, but they were saying like up here it can, you know, when you get rain, thunderstorms and stuff, it'll knock the bite down for days, which is really bizarre. Like at home, you know, we'll get pressure changes, but it won't... Uh, it won't kill the bite for days on end. It'll just, you know, the bite might drop off for that morning or that afternoon, but it usually come back on the same day. But these fish just seem like they go completely off the feed. Uh, so it's really different. I think the other difference is at home, you know, I live in a more like high desert uh, rain shadow 
climate and so we pretty much just have <laughs> sunny days uh, all summer and you know we have very little changes in pressure systems and such and so we have pretty good kokanee fishing consistently all the time and the only thing that i really pay attention to is the moon cycle i just try not to go fishing after a full moon night that's clear because that they will seem to like not go on the feed in the morning and they won't be as aggressive until later in the morning but i've still had good days um after a full moon night i just don't start really catching until like nine or ten in the morning i spoke about this with ben foger who has a really good youtube channel which just focuses primarily on the caribou and other bc kokanee and lake trout fisheries um i'll put a link to his youtube channel below it's definitely worth checking out he's runs a bunch of different facebook groups for the region he's just a really nice guy um, you should check out his stuff but he was he was seemingly perplexed that uh you know we don't have similar outcomes with our kokanee fishing during rain events and stuff like that you know and i i learned the kokanee fish on uh, the west side of washington state so it rained all the time there and i caught kokanee in the rain like crazy uh they didn't seem to care at all but up here it's like if it rains they're like we're done we're not eating we actually have two rods deployed for the first time this morning that's crazy there he is on the orange hole machine and he's off turd that was on the orange hoochie I don't use corn very much anymore. I use gulp maggots that I soak in procure bait, water soluble bait oils. It seems to work for me and they're a lot more shelf stable and it's a lot less of a headache to deal with when I'm traveling. So that's what I prefer now. Nope. There we go. Gosh, that's some crazy fishing right now. Feels small. And he's off. I think there's a lot of small fish out here right now. So I think, uh, if they're not peeling line like that first guy, I'm not really interested at this point. Definitely keeping me busy this morning. There are little drive bys. Oh, he's still there. Look at that. <laughs> He's just a small fish. Shake him off. <laughs> yeah, just a little guy. It's the same size that I caught the other day. You know, it's good to see a diversity of age classes in these lakes. They, uh, bodes well for the future. When I was at DECA the other day, they, uh, were all just big, you know? And that always gets me worried, but I don't see little fish like that. It's like what's what's coming down the pipeline for the future of that fishery i don't know sometimes i think you know lakes like that where you see really big fish suddenly but you're not seeing small fish because they don't have any competition that's why they got big that means you know in the next year or two it's it's gonna tank i've seen it happen on my local lakes a lot where you'll just start seeing bigger and bigger fish and then boom there's just nothing man these Paulina Peak light dodgers just go crazy. I just love the action on those things. Look at how hard they thump. They almost turn over, but then they er, 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 turn back. Look at that hoochie. It is moving. I'm seeing some kokanee jump out here, and I noticed on DECA there was big kokanee jumping, and I would go and troll to where they were at, and even though I was fishing relatively deep, uh, I'd still catch fish in those general areas, so it just seems like they're just coming up. And going back down and you know being in the top 25 foot of the water column here the odds that you're going to mark them unless you're going right over the top of them are not great because the diameter of your cone isn't that big there he is there we go 
That one's taking some line. Oh yeah. Big fish. Oh, stay on there. Stay down. This eagle's gonna try to come in and take my fish. Stay back, buddy. Oh, here he comes. The eagle right above me right now. <laughs> he was like, I will take your fish. I've had him do that before. They get a hold of it. They'll just rip it right off the hook. Still there. Whoa. Taking a line. Oh, no. No. Why? How do they do that? That is just crazy. You're killing me, Smalls. Well, back to the my initial experience here, which is just trolling through tons of fish, not getting any bites. It's so strange. That's on the uh, flutter bug. Doesn't feel as big as some of the other fish I've had this morning. But maybe he's just a lousy fighter, right? Let's find out. I've had some big fish sometimes just swim right to the boat and then they go absolutely crazy. Oh, there he goes. Oh, of course. Now it's gonna get me tangled in my other line. And there he goes, throws it. Oh my God. I hate when the big ones do that. They just swim right to the boat and then they just jump, jump, throw it. That's brutal. Man, I've lost a couple of big fish today. Can't keep them pinned. That sucks. <sighs> I've lost three big fish, only landed one and a dink. Not a good start. Hey, that fish did not fight at all. He just came right in. No runs, nothing. Saved it all for the boat. Gave him the victory he needed. There we go. He's peeling mine. <laughs> There's another jumper. God, they are just going crazy back there. I need to get this one to get my mojo, my confidence back. Oh, stop that nonsense. Stay down, you silly. Okay, let's see if we can't make this. He's head shaking. I just get his head turned. There we go. Got him. Yes, that is a beast. Okay, I'm gonna get this one down in the strike zone like right now since the bite's so good. There you go, look at that. Wow, that's a nice fish. This has been my workhorse lure. All the, I've caught so many fish on it that the hooks are losing all their red color. There we go, man, beautiful fish, huh? Just so thick, how girthy that is, it's crazy. It's a really nice fish. Oh, there's a big, big school of kokanee here. Tapped at it. Didn't commit though. Just took a swing at it. They went through that school. Too bad. See if he's following it. 
Let it drop in front of him a little bit. Just mouthed it. stayed with it <laughs> another big one on the surface back there he followed that thing for a long time he has gone deep now he's gonna save his energy for the jumps near the kayak I guess oh yeah there he is okay buddy oh of course what a jeez these guys are little okay oh jesus i can't believe i didn't get him on that one look at these guys they're nuts this is stressful come on Wow, that is a beast of a coconut. I, that one just took about two years off my life. Jeez. There you go, you can see that little flutter bug, moon jelly gold, gold dodger. Another dandy. The caribou is coming through for me now. I had my doubts about this place the first couple days up here, but now I'm starting to change my mind. I went through a school, and I got like a little tap. And he just followed it. I'm absolutely positive that fish just came off that school and followed my gear. Got that one on the turn. They'll do that sometimes. Like They'll just tap it, taste it, this one feels really small. I think he just popped off. Yeah, he did. It felt like a smaller fish. Yeah, as I was saying, they will just follow it for a long way. I've In the past, they used to run some underwater cameras down there, but they were really good for learning, not so much for sharing because the quality of the video is terrible, but you could just see these kokanee. You go through a school and one or two would peel off and they just follow you for over a mile. They'll just swim beside it not really do anything <laughs> then you turn and all of a sudden they just smash it or you slow down or you, you know you do something changes up the action on the lure so when i bait these flutter bugs you don't want to over bait them because it will just destroy the action on the lure i see a lot of people put you know way too much bait behind their lures like these i mean this is true if you're running things like apexes and such too but with these flutter bugs i actually just like to pinch one of these berkeley gold maggots in half and then just put those half pieces on each and that keeps the mass down and lets the action stay if i'm running corn i'll just put corn one piece of corn on the top hook and leave the back one empty then you always want to check it because sometimes like even if like it gets turned sideways or the corn gets turned sideways it'll really dampen the movement all you gotta do is just rotate it or turn it and then the, mo the motion will return you know, it's interesting thinking about contrasting fishing in the caribou say with fishing in the okanagan country in washington state and there um you know the lakes are similar in that they're both stocked with kokanee and rainbow trout. Same as they do here in the caribou. They put impressive numbers of rainbow trout in these lakes with kokanee in them. But I, I get no like rainbow trout bycatch here. It's so strange. Like they, in Washington state, rainbow trout are just almost a nuisance um, when you're kokanee fishing. And here in the caribou, uh, I haven't touched a single one. And I fish Ruth, Sulfurus, Deca, and Bridge. I mean, trolling all day. And, uh, you know, I just never, never caught a trout. 
it's weird. Um, even when I was running on the surface trying to target these jumping kokanee that I see rolling on the surface, I never just picked up a trout. I mean, if you did that in Washington State, if you pulled your gear up shallow, you'd be constantly molested by trout. But it doesn't happen here. It's so strange. And I actually am a little bit sad about that because there's some beautiful, unique strains of rainbow trout in the caribou, like the horsefly strain, which is kind of like they're a very golden colored one, the black water, the dragon. I mean, they're all beautiful I and mean, they have very distinct and unique markings and colors on each one. And they, they get big here. Uh, but yeah, it's just strange to not catch any. Oh, fishies, where'd you go? I don't know. Sometimes they're not willing to come up to hit something, so gotta put it right down in their face. I'm seeing fish scattered anywhere from 20 to 35. So this one's probably more in the 20 zone. I push this one down in the 30s. I don't know if those fish down in the 30s are Lakers or if they're kokanee. I guess we'll find out. That was a little deeper rod from the pink and chartreuse hoochie. Doesn't feel very big. Just a little dude. See ya. I certainly had my chance to limit before 9 a.m., but I just lost too many fish this morning. That is a bummer. Turned into a beautiful day, though. Well, I am going to use the downrigger as a tool here, so I'm going to go through schools, and if I don't get bit, I'm going to crank up and see if I can change the... Just that change might trigger them to bite. All right, going through a huge school now. I'm right, just plowing right through the middle of them. And since I only have like a 15 foot setback, they should be right there on it. And Still got some fish falling on. Did not work. Darn it. Okay, well. Thought that might be worth a shot. There's some more. Oop, that was a bite there. See that? There was one fall on it. Well, that's a failed experiment. I've gone through about five or six schools and not a bite. Fresh out of ideas on how to make them bite. I've tried everything. I've tried every color, speed, from one to two miles per hour. These guys are just tough. Tough to catch after uh, the morning bite. Well, it's just about one o'clock, and I think I'm just going to call it. It just goes to show that if you don't get out on these lakes early, and you miss those bite windows, it can be a really rough day. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm surprised because I, you know, Kokanee Lakes at home, people people usually realize that those uh, bite windows are pretty narrow and try to get on the water first light. But there was nobody out here on the water with me until like almost 7 o'clock. And by then it was pretty much over. I still got a couple small fish and drive-bys in the 7 to 8.30 hour. But nothing since. Anyways... Much better outcomes than the first time I came here when I was on the water O Dark 30 and got essentially nothing aside from very one very small fish. But uh, yeah, Bridge is a tough one. There's a lot of fish here, but 
they have very narrow bite windows and you just got to be here for them all right i'll put links to all of the lures that worked for me here uh, in the description below and big shout out to paulina peak making it possible for me to come up to bc and do some kokanee fishing north of the border which has been really fun interesting and very challenging it's probably one of the most challenging kokanee road trips i've ever been on um it's been a tough tough bit with the weather it was all shifty but it seems like high pressure settling back in but still very different conditions than what i uh, am used to fishing in back at home all right i'll see you guys next time just remember fish smarter not harder